Hi there. Welcome to the first video in my series on completing the square. So what is completing the square? Well, when we have a quadratic expression, if we can write it in this kind of format, then it's called completing the square. And what I'll do is I'll show you how we go about this for the first example. And as I work through these examples, you might at some stage want to just pause the video and have a go yourself. But I'd certainly encourage you to have a go at these last two examples, which summarize the steps that we've carried through here. So let's start with the first one. We've got to express x squared plus 8x minus 1 in this format. So what we do is we say this is identical to, it's always a good idea to write identical rather than equals because we're just trying to write an identical expression. It's not an equation. So what we do is we write a bracket like this, okay, similar to what we've got here with a squared on the outside. And then we put an x here and next we have what is called the coefficient of x. Coefficient of x is the number in front of x. So in this example it's plus 8, this one minus 10, 3 and so on. So we have the coefficient of x. So if we have plus 8 that's going to be plus 4. Now if I just step to the side for a moment and expand x plus 4 all squared. Let's just have a look and see what we get. x plus 4 times x plus 4. Well in the usual way this is going to be identical to x times x which is x squared. Then you're going to get 4x plus another 4x which is going to be 8x. Notice how we get double the result of the product of the two terms x times 4, the product of the terms is 4x, and we double it and get 8x. And that's why we end up halving this number, so that we can generate that term. However, when we finally do 4 times 4, we end up with plus 16. So it's not correct to say that this is identical to this. You can see that we've got this extra 16. There is no 16 here. So what we do is we take this value and we subtract it. So I'll just write it in red here just to illustrate the connection. So x plus 4 all squared minus 16 just gives us x squared plus 8x, what we have for the first two terms. So to make it identical, all I've got to do is put that minus 1 back in. So if you were to expand this, it's identical to x squared plus 8x minus 1. And then we just finally clean this up and then we can say that this is identical to x plus 4 all squared and then minus 16 minus 1, well that's minus 17. And we've got it now in this format. We've completed the square. If we had to say what a and b were for this example, a would be 4 and b would be minus 17. We're adding minus 17 there. Okay, well that's that example. And here's a similar example. You might like to have a go at this one, in fact. So just give you a moment to pause the video if you want to give that one a go. Okay, welcome back then. Let's see how you got on. Well, the only difference with this one is I've chosen a negative x term here as opposed to this one. But the principle is still much the same. What we do is we set up a bracket, put a squared there, put an x at the front, and we halve the coefficient of x. This time the coefficient of x is minus 10, so if we halve that it's going to be minus 5. Now I'd strongly encourage you to try and work this out in your head because you're not going to want to keep writing this out all the time. But we'll do it for the moment, okay? x minus 5 times x minus 5. So what does it give us? Well, we get x times x, so it's going to be identical to x squared. We get x times minus 5, which is minus 5x. Then we get another minus 5x, that's minus 10x. So this is looking good, okay, for these first two terms. 
Then we get minus 5 times minus 5, which is going to be plus 25. But there is no 25 here. So what I'm going to do is take this term away from here. So that's minus 25. So if I expanded this, I'm just going to get x squared minus 10x. Then I've got this plus 3 here, which I need to put back on the end to make it identical. And if we clean this up, we've just got x minus 5 then, all squared, and minus 25 plus 3 is minus 22. Now this next example is a little harder, not that much harder, but it's got an odd number here, so it's going to involve fractions. And again, you might like to pause the video at this stage and just have a go. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So let's take you through this anyway. What we've got to do then is put a bracket like so with a squared there, put the x at the front and now half the coefficient of x. So it's half of 3, which is 1 and a half. But I'd encourage you to just write it as 3 over 2. It's much easier to work with when it's in fraction form like this. So what do we get if we expand that bracket? Well, again, you might like to try and work it out in your head, but I'll just write it down here for the moment, OK? So what we get is that this is identical to x times x, which is x squared. We get 1.5x plus another 1.5x, which is 3x. And then we end up with 1.5 times 1.5. But if you think of it as 3 over 2 times 3 over 2, it's much easier. 3 times 3 is 9, and 2 times 2 is 4. So much easier to work with fractions than, say, 1.5 or 1.5. So you can see we've got our x squared plus 3x up here. We don't want the 9 quarters, so I'm going to subtract 9 quarters from this. And then we just need to put minus 2 in. And tidying this up then gives us x plus 3 over 2, all squared. And then I'm going to think of minus 2 as minus 8 over 4, minus 8 quarters. So you've got minus 9 quarters, minus 8 quarters is minus 17 quarters. OK, so basically when I'm squaring these brackets, this is what I am thinking. And as I say, we should really be able to square a bracket in our heads without ever having to really write this out. Now, I've got two more examples here which definitely would encourage you to do because these are based around these three here. So just give you a moment to have a go at these. And when you come back, you can check your work solutions against mine. OK, welcome back then. Let's see how you got on. So with this first one, just have an open bracket here with the squared there, put the x there, and half the coefficient of x. Half the 12, which is going to be plus 6. Now I'm not going to write out the brackets like this. We're going to realise that this is x squared, plus twice the product, which is going to be 6x doubled, so that's 12x, takes care of the first two terms. Then you get plus 6 squared, which is 36. We're not going to want that 36, so I subtract it. And then I put back the minus 5 that we have at the end here. And cleaning this up just gives us x plus 6 then, all squared, and minus 36 minus 5 is minus 41. Now with this second one, because we've got an odd number here, it's going to involve fractions, but still handled in much the same way. So open bracket there, squared, put the x there, half the coefficient of x, half of minus 5 is minus 2.5, but write it as minus 5 over 2. Much easier to work with. So when we square this bracket out, we're going to get x squared, 
we're going to get minus 2.5x minus another 2.5x, which is minus 5x. And then we're going to get minus 5 over 2 all squared, which is same as squaring the top and the bottom of the fraction. So you're going to get plus 25 over 4. We don't want it, so we subtract it. Minus 25 over 4. So this, when expanded, would just give us x squared minus 5x. What we need to do is add that 1 on the end. And cleaning this up gives us all of x minus 5 over 2 all squared. And then I'm going to think of 1 as 4 over 4. So you've got minus 25 quarters plus 4 quarters. And that's going to be minus 21 quarters. OK. So that brings us now to the end of this first video in the series. But in the next video, what I'm going to be looking at is terms which contain, say, 2x squared or 3x squared as our coefficient of the x squared term. So if you found this useful, hopefully you'll carry on and look at that video.